Hey everyone, I took a holiday recently to visit a friend in South Korea. One of the things they're really into there is ginseng, uh, which is a type of creepy looking root. You can see it in a lot of energy drinks and stuff there. There's a lot of claims about its medicinal properties, and I was doing some reading in the Journal of Ginseng Research when I got back. I'm sure there's some high quality research published in this journal, but I did spot a few problematic papers as I was going through it. And one of them was this paper about an experimental treatment for arthritis. The researchers ran some tests on human cells and rats. There are a couple of problems with the Western blots in this paper. These images of bands in figure 2 should be unique, but they're not. They've been duplicated, which means that at least one of them is labelled wrong. And there's a similar problem with figure 3 and 4. This might be a little bit tricky to spot, and if you don't look at a lot of Western blots, they might all look the same. But I can assure you that I'm correct about this paper being wrong, because when I posted this on PubPeer, the corresponding author replied and agreed with me. Actually, this is pretty common, right? And to be fair, it's often not a big deal because people make honest mistakes all the time. But this could also be a sign of something untoward. Three mislabeled images in one paper, it's not great. The last author on this paper is Professor Sequan Oh from Yuha Women's University. So I started a Google Scholar search with his name, and then I played the intro to this series, which is Science Police, and this is episode four. And actually, before we get back to Professor Sequan O, oh, I wanted to bring you an update from Science Prison. In episode 3, we locked up Usman Minas and threw away the key to this JPEG. I actually sent Science Police episode 3 to Usman Minas and his colleagues, and they were not impressed. In fact, Usman Minas made what felt like a vague threat by sending me my previous residential address. And I also received a lot of indignant accusations about my character, which, which might be true, but it didn't progress very far in fixing their mistakes. But I have seen one correction published by Frontiers, so well done, Frontiers. <laughs> They've replaced this blatant Photoshop hack job with a new set of images. Um, unfortunately, there is another overlap between the stomach images in the correction, uh, so maybe they can publish uh, a correction to the correction. So back to Professor O's research. After finding these three mislabeled pictures in the first paper, I quickly found several more instances where pictures were duplicated within papers. Let me show you some, some more examples. This one is from a paper where the authors were using compounds derived from ginseng to treat morphine dependence in mice and rats. I often find that adding some stretch can help make the duplications a little more obvious. And this one's from a study about pregnancy in mice, and it's quite complicated, although, yeah, there are some duplicated bands here as well. So at this point, I decided it'd be worthwhile attempting the far more arduous task of checking for duplications between papers. So I'll talk quickly about how I did that, and the first thing I did was make a spreadsheet. And then I downloaded all the PDFs of Professor O's research. I saved screenshots of all the figures, divided them up into categories, and methodically compared them to each other. I was expecting to find a lot more matching images of Western blots and electrophoresis gels. I did find a few more. Here's one example. These two images should be from entirely different experiments. One is supposed to show results from cultured cells and the other experiment involved laboratory mice. So it's hard to imagine how these got mixed up but they do appear to be duplicates. Honestly though, trying to cross-reference a huge jumble of grayscale DNA gels and, and western blots is, is pretty tedious. There's probably some more if anyone can be bothered to look, but what I did find that was a little more interesting to me was a lot of duplicated images of rat brain autoradiographs. So autoradiography is a method which can be used to image biological samples. In this case, the researchers used it to look at the distribution of certain proteins or nucleotide sequences in very thin slices of brain tissue. Because it's very much a biological procedure, these images should all be effectively as unique as fingerprints or snowflakes. However, I did find a couple of pixel-perfect matches within papers. Uh, here's one example. In this study, rats were exposed to pentobarbital, which is a kind of sedative drug. And you can see that in this set of three autoradiographs, the control image is just a 
pixel perfect reproduction of the image which is supposed to show a rat in withdrawal from pentobarbital. The thing that I pay close attention to when I'm trying to find matching images is often the stuff that's not part of the biological structure. These dark spots of noise are quite useful to align images in your mind and find similarities. Anyway, I didn't just find these copy and paste reproductions. There were also images which looked a little bit different but were clearly derived from the same source. So here's an example of that. These three images are from a paper where the rats were exposed to compounds derived from ginseng. And these images are from a different study where some rats were treated with the sedative drug butorphanol. But you can see the characteristic spots of noise, which to me are a dead giveaway. Now, this set of images are a little bit darker, so maybe one set has been exposed for longer, or perhaps the contrast is, is just higher. But these are certainly derived from the same set of original biological samples, not distinct animals as they should be. Sometimes the, the quality is quite bad because some of these papers are quite old, but you can still figure it out. I'm pretty sure that these were derived from the same original scan, except one seems to have gone through several rounds of photocopying. But apart from these isolated cases of copying, as I was going through these papers and finding matches, I started to build something that, to be quite honest, surprised me. So here's my diagram of over 30 mislabeled images in 10 different papers. So the rounded black rectangles group images by which paper they were published in. The black lines connect papers that share images and the colored rectangles highlight which images are copies of each other. Some of these are pixel perfect matches, some are slightly different developments or images of the same brain slice, and one or two share unique features that would really strongly indicate that the slices were taken from the same brain if they're not just a copy or a different exposure of the same slice. Something quite interesting about all this is that Professor O hasn't really contested almost any of my comments. After apparently misconstruing my first uh, comment, he seems to have just accepted that all of these duplications have happened. And he's been posting alternative images and leaving a kind of copy and paste response. Here's an example of the kind of reply he's been leaving. We thought that the picture was an auxiliary means of showing the binding trend. The changes of figure did not affect the values of NMDA subunit or MK801 binding by butorphanol. So this is a really common response that you'll see on PubP, and it falls into a kind of category of responses which goes like, okay, so the pictures are wrong, but the data in the tables which we based our conclusions on is fine. So let me respond to this, because it's actually a very irritating thing for a scientist to say. The images are the raw data. They're not an auxiliary. In fact, in this case, it's, it's a lot worse, because the numbers in these tables should be derived from the images. So the way that these studies are done, first, they take a series of these autoradiographs, and then they calculate how much radiation there is in each section of the brain based on how dark it is compared to these control panels you can see here. And then they calculate the mean and standard deviation and populate these tables. So these pictures are not just illustrations, right? And anyway, the target audience of an article like this is a neuroscientist, probably someone who's very familiar with autoradiographs around the time that these papers were published. They don't need an example of what an autoradiograph looks like in general any more than that would be useful than showing like a random infrared spectrum to a chemist. But let, let's imagine though for a moment that we accept Professor O's claim, the experiments were all done correctly, and the images were just added as illustrations. What we're being asked to believe is a really stupid story, right? His research team conducts the experiments on rats, they expose them to butorphanol or whatever, then they, they slice up the brain, they develop the images, they measure how dark each of these areas are, they calculate the mean and the standard deviation, they populate the table in their paper with the correct values. Um, so they have the images to hand because they've just done the quantification with them, but when they prepare the manuscript, they grab an image from a different experiment and then publish that instead. Why? This paper was published in 2016, and they've used an image that was first published almost 20 years before that in 1997. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Hey everyone, it's me recording the second part of this video. I actually had a whole extra 
bit to this science police investigation where I was going to talk about the primer design problems in Professor O's research, but it was actually turning out to be quite difficult to edit. And if you really want to see my comments about primers, there'll be a link in the description. I also had a pretty cynical section to this recording originally, where I predicted that Professor O's university would do nothing after I emailed them. But I was really pleasantly surprised to receive some quick and informative responses from Yuha Women's University. Based on my pub peer comments and the diagram that I showed earlier, they've held a preliminary investigation. They sent me some details about that. Professor O apparently repeated his explanations about confusion over the selection of images, and they've essentially seemed to have rejected the plausibility of that. And they've pointed out that it's hard to mix up images that he's taken in the US with experiments that were performed in South Korea. And that's not a comment that I made, so it seems like they've really given this some thought. From what I understand, following the preliminary investigation, there's going to be a more thorough process, and if I hear anything about that, I'll probably make an update video. But for now, I will be placing Professor O into the third cell of Science Prison, where he's going to join Alam Gear and Usman Minas. I don't upload to this channel as often as I used to, but I've no real intention of stopping YouTube. Obviously the subject of my videos has changed a little bit, but I can only feel motivated to make videos about the stuff that I care about because I don't do this for the views or the ad revenue, as you can probably tell. For the OG subscribers though, I do have an update on Robert Morse coming. And if you've watched all the way through and you want to see more videos on this channel, the best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, write me a comment or send me a message about a video you'd like to see, and share these videos with people who might be interested in them.